the Crafty Puerto Rican here. My name is Juana Luisa. And so today I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a tutorial on embroidering an adult shirt. In this case, it's a t-shirt. I'm gonna be using the special hook, which is called repositional hook. And also I'm gonna show you how to do the use the software in Embrilliance and how to switch from a five by seven to a repositional hook. I don't know if the other sauce will allow you to do this, but I'm sure they do. This is a hoop that is for a single needle flatbed embroidery machine. You have a PA800 or PEA770, and the one that I have, which is a SE1900, you can use this hoop. And um, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do all the way from the uh, hooping of the stabilizer all the way to switching the software into five by 12. So if you have any questions or any suggestion, you can drop the question or suggestion down on the um, description box. And if you have subscribed, don't forget to hit the notification bell, which will allow you to see the rest of my videos or be notified of my videos. If you have not subscribed yet, consider subscribing because this channel is gonna uh, um, serve you to learn about all kinds of crafting, especially embroidery, sewing, sublimation and um, the use of high heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move now towards my laptop so that we can go and open and brilliance, okay? So I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, let's start the process of hooping and I want to show you the dimension, the difference between the um, hoop that comes with the machine. I have, like I said before, the SE1900 from Brothers which the largest hoop is a five by seven hoop, and this is right here. And this is the repositional hoop that is a five by 12. It's a big difference, okay? The width is the same, it's five inches wide, and the difference is um, this one is 12, and this one is seven inches um, long. Okay, so if you notice the difference on the one that comes with the machine, and this applies to most of the flatbed machines that are from Brothers, um, including the P, E770 and the BA800. And I want to mention that this hoop fits those machines. And so, you know, um, I will link the um, the place from Amazon where I got this and you can see it there. If you want to order, you can order it. There are a lot of different brands of it, but I'm not going to link the one that I got that I'm sure that it's going to fit because it fit my 1900. So if you notice, there's a two hooks that you, if you have a machine already knows that is to position the frame into the machine. And this one, look at the different, it has four of them. It has two here and two here. And this is how you're gonna reposition the, um, the design. You're gonna put the fabric or the garment in here this way. And we're gonna start from the top. You're gonna hook these first two holes into the machine or the hooks, and it's going to embroider everything in here. When that one is done, it's going to act like it was done, and the machine is going to tell you we are done, and then, you know, they're going to ask you to um, just take off the hook. But we know that it's a repositioning hook. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to put this part in place here. You see how we move from place to place? You first have it here, then you're going to reposition it here. And then you're going to go back to the screen on the machine and you're going to choose that file. There are two different files. When you do this um, process, it's going to give you two different files. One for the first part, it's going to call number one, and it's going to give you file number two. So you go from number one, you're going to reposition at number two. And then you start embroidering everything else and it's going to connect it beautifully. Okay, so that you have an idea how it goes. All right? So... Um, I'm going to take you to Embrilliance and um, show you how to switch from a regular hoop to the repositional hoop because a lot of people have questions like that. Okay, so how is it that I choose that from Embrilliance? I don't know another software because I don't. I know there are a couple other um, embroidery software out there, but I'm just going to talk about Embrilliance, okay? So I'm going to take you to the my laptop to show you how to do it, okay? Okay, so we are in Embrilliance right now. And this is the way that it looks like. Um, it comes, you know, when you turn it on, it has the grids on. I don't like working with the grids necessarily. It just, I don't know. I, I prefer not to have grids on it. So I'm gonna go here to what it says view. 
let me make sure that you can see that I have the arrow right here okay it says view I'm gonna click that okay and then I'm gonna you see he has all these check marks I'm gonna undo this draw grid I like it plain this way I mean I prefer it this way okay so um, you can adjust the size right here if you see the arrow you can either plus it or minus it uh, I'm gonna put it a little bit smaller right here um, yeah so that's the way it looks and in order for me to change this regular which is a five by seven to a multi um, or to a repositional hoop I'm gonna go to this icon up here it looks like a file Okay, and I'm gonna click it and it gives me the regular hoops right here, you see? But if you notice on the right side, it says normal and it says multi-position. And that's the one I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click it to show me. And it shows you uh, different choices right here. The one we're gonna choose is the one who says 130 by 300 jumbo hoop. And if you notice down here, it says 12 by 5 and that's the one just to verify that that's the one you have we're gonna go and do um, okay and there you have it now we have to put it smaller because it's a bigger hoop right so I'm gonna make a little bit smaller and let me put a little bit bigger all right right here is good all right so now the next step is to choose our file if you notice, I have USB ports already on my computer right here, where I have all my files. And um, but the way I did that is that I went to my downloads and I transferred from my downloads to the USB. And I'm sure you guys know how to do that. Um, that applies to any documents that you do, you wanna save it on the USB. It's the same, 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 same step, no difference. All right, and then um, in order for me to access that file, I'm gonna go up here to this little yellow file in here icon. I'm gonna click in there and I'm gonna use um, choose USB. Down the arrow, down here I see USB, choose USB. And those are all my um, files that I have right there. Then I'm gonna be looking for the file, okay? But in order for me, to do this because this file already did the process already saved it and all the editing i'm going to look to the original file if i can find it so that we can go through the whole process of sizing it and everything okay let me see if i can find it okay so here yeah, i found it um, like I said, I already did this, so it's going to appear a split design, but in your case, it's going to be a blue box, and it's going to give you the design or the file call, whatever it's called, your name is called. Mine is called I am bless you all. So I'm going to click that. It shows it right here. And then I'm going to say open. It's right here, okay? Now, um, this is big, so I'm going to move it a little bit. Like I, I'm, In my case, in Brilliance, usually this box right here, with all the steps is under here. Let me put it this a little bit bigger so you can see. It's under here, but I like separate mine because I like to see all my colors. And sometimes when you have this, it's a long file. It blocks the colors a little bit. So I just put one box here and a box here. And I still have this space to work with. If you put this together, you might have more space. But what I do, what I do is that I make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I move it. You see, I don't need any more space than that in my case. But, you know, if you have embryos, you know what I'm talking about. I like to separate my boxes. Um, six by ten. So this came six by ten. What happened? When you are in brilliance and you want to enlarge a, a file, you should not enlarge it too much. Why? Because um, this is more or less how it comes with. You see, it's too big for the five by twelve. You cannot enlarge it or diminish it more than 20% of the original design. Why? If you, let's say, want to make it smaller, you cannot move it more than 20%. If it's 100%, no less than 80 if you want to make it smaller. If it's, um, you want it bigger, 
um, and you have 100%, don't enlarge it more than 20%, more than 120 in the numbers up here. Um, okay? Why? And it gives you the percentages, right? That right now, it says 130% because I have a hoop that is 5 by 12, not 6 by 10. So I need to make it smaller when it comes to the length of the, um, of the design, and I have to make it sm smaller when it comes to the width, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the width smaller to a 5 inches because this is a 5 by 12 hoop. All right. So I'm going to act as close as I can. If you notice, um, this number right here, it says 86%, which is okay. All right. It's not quite 20%. I mean, larger so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, it says 5 and it's 86.9%, um, which is okay. I don't take the risk that way of when I embroider these. The stitches are wonky and they look a lot of holes because it's not meant to be that size. It's meant to be 6 by 10. But you are allowed to make it a little bit smaller or bigger. Now, when it comes to the length, um, I can go ahead because it's a 12 um, inches long. If I want it, I can make it all the way to 12, but guess why? What? If I do that, it gets to 138%. I cannot do that because, again, the design is going to look bad. So I have to pull it back a little bit, uh, like 120. And I've done this to all my designs in this repositional hoop. And I go to the max. You can make it less if you want to, all right? Now, if, um, if um, you have letters you know, in the file like me in this design, you also have to take in consideration that if you can, if you switch the size, the letters might look bad. The whole design might look bad. So always check at your design when you do these changes, making it longer or shorter or whatever. In my case, it did not affect the way the lettering looks. So I'm going to leave it like that. So at the end, this design is nine, nine and three eighths by five. All right which is bigger than five by seven. So this is a larger design for me. So now I'm here and I want to center the design. I'm gonna go to this box right here. It says center. It tells you that it's for centering certain design in the hoop. I'm gonna make it up so you can see it's right here. So I'm gonna center it right here. I'm gonna click that and it center the design in the middle. All right. Once you're done with that, you're done. The design is there. And then you're going to save it. And the way you're going to save this, and you notice here, one thing that is very important, this is our step of the design. These are the colors you're going to use. All right, it tells you the colors. Before I con continue, I want, I have my color set at preferred, meaning that I chose the broader color for my machine. It gives you different options of different machines that you have. And so um, I always go back and check that I'm in preferred, all right? And um, so do, 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 do. current page, thread. So say it says brother embroidery, brother embroidery. So I'm sure those are the colors because each machine and each um, file comes with, for each machine colors. And I want to make sure that these colors I'm going to find in my colors of thread. If you put another brand, another machine, or whatever, all this right here, it's not going to match the colors that you have. You have for genome. I mean, it has tons of machines, but mine is brother, okay? So I leave it at brother, and then I put okay. And I make sure that it says, you know, that it's for brother. It tells you right here, brother embroidery, light blue. In this case, this is just a straight embroidery there's no applique there's nothing so there's not much steps that i need to follow just put the color of step okay because this is just straight embroidery i plan to do another video after this one um that i'm going to show you how to do in the case of an applique sadly this repositional hoop you cannot do appliques because it will split in the middle and if it's Split in the middle is kind of difficult. I'm going to find a way to do it. I haven't done it yet, but as soon as I, as far as I know, um, you cannot do appliques in the middle, but you, what can do, what you can do is you can make, get, um, do all the embroidery on one side and all the appliques on the other side. And that's the way I do all of my, um, blankets, my 
minky blankets, I put the design in here and then I put the name of the child or whatever person in, on the other side. In other words, um, um, I do this. I make it smaller, like a five by seven here. If you notice, there's a middle, there's a line in the middle right here. I try not to pass that line. And whatever design I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it here, I'm gonna write whatever. And on this side, I do my applique, which I have plenty of space because it's, a, um, it's gonna be like five by six or whatever. You have five by six and five by six, plenty. It makes it huge. And I'm gonna show you at the end how I've done it before. Um, okay, so yeah, so I'm not gonna save this because I have this already saved, but I wanna show you that right after you do this, you're gonna go to file right here. Let me go up here. You're gonna go to file to save it, okay? And you're gonna save it as stitch and working. Don't get confused by this one, save, stitch and work. It's save as right here, it's very important. You're gonna click that, I'm gonna take you to this page right here. You say, it says USB, la la la, and then on the bottom, you put the name of your design, whatever you wanna put the name of your design, okay? You write it down here. And then you save it, at the end you save it. I'm not gonna do it again, because I already saved it. Very important, another step that I follow, I always print my design. Let me cancel it, because you know, it's asking me. So I always print my design, always, always, always. Why? Because it's good to have it. Um, I go to print and I print my design right here. That print is gonna show me this right here, okay? It prints it exactly at the size of the design, exactly. I use this, I cut it around and I place it in the garment to give me an idea for positioning. If you notice, look at this. That's what it gave me in the middle. Cross in the middle, that's the center of the design. It helps me to position, I love this, okay? So I always print my design and I save it after I use it. If I, In case I wanna do another garment with the same file, I already have this, already cut on everything. And then it gave me the color steps right here by color and easy to find my threads and I easy to follow when I'm embroidering. So I will suggest always to print your designs. Okay, so um, I think that's all to cover. I'm gonna cancel this because like I said, I already have this. So I'm gonna um, click, it says save changes to split design. No, because I don't wanna change this. Save, this save. So um, I don't wanna change it. All right, so this is it right now. We're gonna go into the sewing machine, I mean the embroidery machine to set up the design, um, design. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and include before that, I'm gonna show you how to do the um, hooping, all right? All right, see you in a little bit. Okay, so here are the things that I'm gonna use for the hooping. Uh, let me see if I can make this smaller, because this looks kind of like, um, further away. I think that's the best I can do right now. I wanna do, okay, that's better. So right here is the hoop that we're gonna be using, okay? And we're gonna be using cutaway stabilizer, all right? Because it's the garment. So a garment, we use cutaway. In other stuff, we can do tear away. But in this case, cutaway. And in my, I did a previous video on how to embroider baby shirts. And I went through all the, things that are items that I have and where I got it from. And I linked over there all the things that I use um, and that I got from Amazon, mostly from Amazon, okay? So this is a cutaway I get in a roll because it's more convenient and more cheap, it's cheaper. And then I use my stitch cover or cloud cover. And I got it from Amazon also. And I believe the brand is cloud cover. Uh, so this cover the stitches at the end um, behind the garment so that, you know, the stitches are nice and soft and it doesn't bother your skin. It's a stitched cover, all right? And also we're going to be using an adhesive spray. In this case, this is a brand that I use based in adhesive. I got this one, uh, I believe it was at Walmart. Yeah. And like I told you before, I already trimmed the design so that I can position it right here. And I'm gonna be 
I'm embroidering this shirt right here. It's from Gildan. It's a short sleeve t-shirt. All right. Um, I also have um, my heat pad over there because I'm going to um, iron the item in half to look for the center of the garment. And also, at the end, we're going to iron the um, stitch cover. And I'm going to be using my mini press in this case to do the pressing. All right? Yeah. I have a bigger press, but I didn't want to bother with a bigger press. All right, so yeah, so this is right here again. So this is a hooping. This is for the people are beginners. I know a lot of people are, might be watching already know how to do this, but I wanted to include this because a lot of people um, are starting on the um, embroidery um, crafting area. So I wanted to show. So the first thing is what we're gonna hoop. So this is where the knot is. We're gonna open it a little bit, all right? Um, because you know that's when you push this part inside which is the other part you're gonna push down all right this is the part you push down we're gonna place this right here okay and then we're gonna try to press it down to push it in now this is very important there's a little arrow up here this arrow always go to match the arrow in the hoop up here okay always 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 you see this arrow in here it has to match it all right it goes like that okay so let's do this arrow with arrow And you push down. There you go. You hear that? It's like a click. You can open the knob a little bit bigger, but I try to do it as minimum as I can, so it will be very tight. Okay. Down. And then you screw it in. Okay. All right. And that is how you hoop. Okay, so I forgot to mention, we're going to use this template to mark the um, part of the hoop, the cutaway. We're going to make uh, markings to make sure that this is centered. All right. And these are the markings that it comes with, all those markings. You're going to do mark on each little hole, with this will mark the center of the garment. In this case, because the t-shirt is going to be going... A different way I'm gonna be marking all of them make sure that I have the center of the garment in this case the t-shirt okay top and bottom all around all right and here we have it okay the all mark okay um, then after that we will spray it with the adhesive spray but before we're going to go ahead and iron the t-shirt in half so I can have the center of the t-shirt. Yes, a lot of centering going on on embroidery. You have to make sure that you have the right position, okay? I found my screwdriver. I'm just going to tie it, make sure that it's tight enough. Okay, this came with the machine, with the embroidery machine. Because you don't want that hoop to be moving around while you're embroidering, okay? All right, so it's tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the... Um, Ironing part. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Let me move my part right here. And like I said before, I'm gonna be using my mini press, my Cricut mini, my Cricut mini press right here. make sure that you have a good view so we're gonna go ahead since we're gonna do the embroidery what i'm gonna do is turn the shirt inside out but before i do that let me just do the marking here that's very important i forgot about this use this to center the design do it 
this way first and then I do the other one. I'm going to show you why. Because when we place this in the hoop completely, I want to be able to see the front of the shirt. Even though to place it in the hoop, we're going to turn the shirt inside out. I still want to mark this part also. And you're going to understand when I show you. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but you'll see. For those who are beginners, for those who already done this before, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm... I on this part in here. All right. I usually do three fingers. Some people do four. I like three. I like my designs to be higher. I don't like it to be too low. This already has the center right here. So I'm going to follow what I iron. That's the center of my design, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark, this is a marker, a white one is like a um, shock, because this is so dark, the red one is not gonna show, the one that I used earlier, so I'm gonna use the white one. So I'm gonna mark right here. This is a point on the top. And this goes, comes out, okay? And this is the bottom. Right here. Now, very important, I'm going to point my finger down and I'm going to place it in half exactly where it goes in the half. Okay, you see? And I'm going to do my center right here. This is the important part, the center. Right? Let me do a cross. Maybe you can see it because you see. Do it again. Just make sure that I do the right thing here. It's a little bit lower than what I anticipated. It's right here. I can see where the needle is going to start here to center, and this is the top of the design. Now we're going to go ahead and turn it inside out. Actually, it went through, so I'm not going to, I don't really need to iron anyway. It went through the iron and it went through the marking, which is perfect. Yeah. Markings went through. Good. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. It's a dark garment, so I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Or maybe you can, I don't know. There you go. I'm folding the shirt in half. And when you want embroidering, this is the part that takes the most time. It's the marking and the positioning. Because the other stuff, the machine does it. But this part... It takes time because at the end you don't want you know a design that is off center and looking wonky yeah so okay so this is the center right here and iron again now this is the part that i want to explain what you're going to do the hooping now we're going to spray it all right right here you're done with this for now okay so i'm gonna spray lightly it's not a lot away from you okay just take away now the garment is gonna be let's say this is a sewing machine i want this part which is the most fabric away from the machine so i'm gonna place it this way this is the neck I'm not going to place it this way because then I have all this bunch of material close to them, close to me and I don't want it. I want it to be away from the machine. This is the part away from the machine and this is the way I'm going to place it, okay? So I'm going to turn it around. This is going to be my center, okay? 
So I'm going to place the center of the shirt right, this is called floating, right on these markings. This is my center right here. And I mark the center. And if you remember, I marked the center. I'm going to put it here in the center. Right here. Matching the dot with the markings that I did. And the bottom, you see, it's almost perfect right there. Okay. I'm going to make sure that it's flat in the, on the other side. I'm going to turn it around. Do the same thing. Make sure that it's flat in here. Stick in there. I'm going to put my hand in between. Making sure that there's no gaps or no things out of the way. I can feel it. Okay, yeah. Make sure that the garment is straight on the other side. Okay. There's a little wrinkle in there. I'm going to lift it up and flatten it. Loosen it up. Make sure that it's nice and flat. nice see my mark in the middle my top which is perfect you see the top you see the spacing is perfect yeah this is a dark color shirt but hopefully you'll be able you're able to see what I'm talking about with the markings that I did it looks nice and then now this is the way it's gonna go to the machine right here okay right here if this bothers you, you can cut away the extra. It doesn't bother me. It's fine in there. So this is the way it's going to be embroidering. This way, okay? You have any questions, you can ask me the questions down below on the, um, on the box. that um, Below the video description box, you can ask me any question. Even in Spanish, if you want to, okay? So this part is due. Now we're going to go to the machine to do the embroidery. Yes! Okay, turn off the machine. All right, let's go to the machine. Okay, so now I am looking for my colors of thread. And I used these shards um, that came with my um, thread. I used broad thread. And um, I have two different sets and they came with different colors. Reason why I do that, because even though the printer is going to give me the number of the colors, sometimes on the sets that I have, they're not including the colors or sometimes the numbers change a little bit. So I verify it right here. Look again on the chart because sometimes the numbers change a little bit and you might have it, but you have to check out the charts. Okay. So that's what I wanted to show you. All right. Um. This is the USB extender right here. And I mentioned it that I reason why I use it is to preserve this side right here where the USB goes plugged in. If you embroider a lot, you know, um, there's a lot of um, taking in and now the USB and, you know, that might be damaging to the machine if you do it a lot. I mean, not necessarily the truth, but I want to make sure that it doesn't happen. So I use this extender right here. I got it from Amazon. And um, I don't have a link with Amazon and I don't get any money from Amazon, but most people buy everything from Amazon these days. Ta -da! Uh, yeah. So that's how it goes, all right? That's what I keep on right there. Okay? So I'm going to move you around. And I'm going to make sure there's no garment under the hoop. That is very, very important. Okay? Make sure that everything is clear around. There's no garment under, okay? And I'm going to put it under. And I'm going to hook it into the first position, meaning the first two holes right here, okay? And you're going to hook it the same way you do the regular frame. Um, no different, no different um, issues here. You're just going to hook it the same way you do the regular hoop, okay? Here you go. You hear that click? That's what you want to hear. Again, make sure again 
nothing is around it, not under the hoop. Believe me, it happens to me a couple of times, and I wasted a whole shirt because I wasn't paying attention. If you notice how convenient to put it this way, because all this extra is away from the machine, not in here, you know? Even it applies to hoodies. When I do hoodies, same thing. This position, the hood, hoodie part here and the rest of the garment down here. Especially hoodies are very, 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 very thick. You know that, okay? All right. So. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in here so that you can see how it looks from here. This room is very sunny. It's my favorite room. This is what I have my machine on because I love this morning sun. The whole day sun is very, 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 very nice. And uplifting okay I'm gonna thread my machine I'm not gonna show you the top part of the threading because I need both hands for that I'm holding the camera right now right here that I show you in another video before to put my spoon in here it's more convenient I don't use this part nothing wrong with it I have used it before um, but this part ensures even I use it with this and everything it ensures me less break um, thread break for some reason when I use this one, it doesn't happen. Um, there's nothing wrong if you don't have that. You can use this part of the machine for both for sewing and for embroidery, okay? I'm going to move the camera around because I need to thread the machine and I bring you right back, okay? Everything's nice. I have one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, turn on the machine. So it's here. So now I'm going to look for my design. I'm going to go to the file icon. It's connecting me. Okay, so I'm going to go to look for my file. And it looks like it's this one right here. The last, because it was the latest one that I did. It looks like it. So you see how it's two different files? Because it's going to cut one first and then the other one second. So let me push this and I'm gonna see here if that's a one I want. I am blessed. Okay, so I'm gonna do okay, but I'm gonna do this one first, which is the first part. You just look around and see which one you prefer. I'm gonna do the top one first. This is upside down. So let's um do okay. I'm gonna go set. And then I'm going to go rotate 90 degrees. Okay, there you go. Yep. And that should be the first part. You see it's facing the right way with the shirt going down. It was the other way around. If I put it, push it that way, it would have been bad because it would have embroidered completely, completely, uh, you know, upside down. So it's going to embroider this part first. And then it's going to embroider the other part. Okay. So I'm gonna do okay, because it's gonna start me on the center of this part. And I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of space in here to embroider. I'm gonna put a little bit lower. I'm just moving it a little bit lower. That is more to me, like it's in the middle. Okay, and then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Move around the needle. Make sure that it's clear all the way around, right here on this square. You see? It's shaking, but I'm okay. And this is the area that is going to occupy all this area right here. And if you have a machine, you know how it goes. It does the same thing for the repositional hoop, okay? So I'm going to do okay. It clears. And then I'm going to do embroider. Okay, you're going to see this box up there that is in black thread. That we don't need. Usually it tends to do that um, sewing around in black, like outlining in black. We don't need that box in order to get rid of that box. We're going to skip it. You're going to go down here where the needle is and the minus and plus. And you're going to go to the spool right here. You're going to do plus. It will take it away. Go again. Okay. And you see how it took it away? We're going to go straight to the um, to the design that we want. Again, when you see that box, you're going to press right here. You're going to go plus in the spool sign. And I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. 
And then you're going to press that and it should take you back to the design. Don't um, do the box because it's going to, it's going to sew around it. Like, I don't know why it has that up, but it happens all the time. So remember to do that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and um, we put okay, that it was okay. And um, we're going to start embroidering. Okay. So I'm going to put the needle down. And let's start. This part, it says it takes four minutes. Let's see if that's true or not. That is coming is a light blue and the screen let me know also I don't even probably have to use the paper the screen will let me know embroidering the letter S. I got this design from um, Etsy. I don't remember the shop that I got it from. Um, I don't have an idea, but it's from Etsy. If you notice the S is embroidering very close to the middle of the design that I marked in the center. So that to me, it shows that I marked the right center. And if you notice on the top right here, that's what I marked at the top of the design, which is good because it corresponds with what I marked pretty, pretty close, which is good. Yeah. You see how the S is going close to the marking? It is perfect. That is going, I'm going to show you another embroidery that I did with a 12 by 5 foot or 5 by 4 foot. This is a hoodie and I embroidered this, from, you see? And what I did here is I used that hoop and these are two different files, two different designs by, by two different people. And I went to Embrillions and I did the whole thing. And this is a hoodie, you see? This is an extra large hoodie and this is one of my favorite right now. And if you notice, this is an extra large, is it an extra large or large? Let me see. Let you know right now. This is a large hoodie. And you see how much? This is a long design. You see? This was a 5 by 7 design. It was another 5 by 7 design. And I put them together. I added this part right here. 
So it's three different different files that I put together. done and you're gonna say okay like if you finish like with regular embroidery that you finish with your five by seven you say okay you're done but for the machine you're done but we're gonna choose the other file okay okay so now you see the brackets I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna position it on the second part. You see the second two? These two, you're gonna position it here, okay? And for this, I need both hands, so I won't be able to show you, but you're gonna see me doing it. I need both hands for this, okay? And you hear the code, so it's in place. Okay. Make sure because you took the hook away, make sure that you don't have any piece of the t-shirt under the hook. Make sure that everything is clear, nothing is under, okay? That's what I'm making sure. All right, so. We are going to move you around. I'm gonna show you what to do now because now it's gonna treat it like it's a different file. So we're gonna close to this file. Um, we're gonna go the screen lower here to start a new one we're gonna say yes okay we're done with the one before we're gonna go back here it's looking for the next design we're gonna do the same thing we did before okay i'm gonna go look for the file i'm gonna choose i believe it was this one i'm gonna look in the little screen up here it shows me you see i am blessed that's the next part i'm gonna say okay i'm gonna go set again we have to take a what around because it's upside down so i'm gonna do rotate 90 degrees rotation and it says here i'm gonna say okay and now um i'm gonna make sure that it's centered i'm gonna lower it a little bit because it's a little bit so i'm gonna do no, do a little bit i'm gonna move it a little bit lower to be more up to there that's the best i can do they don't allow me to do anymore i'm gonna so all right i'm gonna check that it's gonna clear it around like i did before i'm gonna check this right here sorry about my finger it's on the way but it'll be okay so it's clearing the same way you did before make sure that it's not hitting the hoop or anything that i don't want to hit which is not because i have plenty of space So I'm in place. Now the same thing I'm gonna do, okay. You repeat the same thing. I'm gonna hit embroidery. And remember the box that we spoke before? We don't need this box in black because we don't need that, all right? So I'm gonna go to the needle down here, the little icon, it has a needle and negative and plus. Push that. I'm gonna do the plus spool, this little spool in here. I'm gonna press that, jump, and I'm gonna hit okay. And it disappeared, you see? Nothing in there. Now we're gonna start again with the same colors than before, okay?
people are we are done 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 so now the next step is to take it out of the hook and cut the um cut away the string the cut away part okay you have an idea how it looks before i take it out you see how it looks it's not fitting it came out real nice real real nice here we are with the shirt we're gonna take it off the hoop of course we have to unscrew it because we screw it real tight this time i'm gonna use the screwdriver that i machine okay? then the rest i can do it with my hands i use the screwdriver to unhook it okay now we're gonna go ahead and cut around the stabilizer um you can go ahead and cut some of these tissues i mean it doesn't really make any difference um you cannot use the um stitch cover on top of it but I try to get rid of you know the long ones just because you know if you don't have to do it I do it so now what I do is I make sure that I take it as close as I can to the stitches you know it has the glue on it you just pull it up a little bit very carefully and I don't know if you've seen my other video but I show this scissor that I use dog peel scissors it's like this shape and it goes against the fabric and it guards it from you accidentally cutting the fabric and i always use this one these are linked on that like i said in the video pre uh, video that i did before showing how to embroider baby shirts it has the links is over there i can probably link that again um you know so that you can know where to get it first of all to cut around it first then you can trim it even lower if you want to pass closer to the okay so now we can go ahead and cut the Top cover or stitch cover to place it and this you place you cut it in the size the rough part of it goes against the material the t-shirt and then the soft part goes on the top like this or this side, okay I'm gonna take it to the place because... okay so I'm pressing here I have my easy press for 10 seconds and 3.15, but you know, I, you can have a lower. Um, it's only a couple of seconds, you don't have to take it that long. Um, I usually do 10 seconds around, you know, 3.15. So, this is an easy press 9 by 9 so because this is a longer design, I'm going to do it in two different parts, okay? Two sections, in other words. Okay. and you notice it's on and you always check the edges make sure that they are you know like on on sometimes you know if you have it in a lower temperature it doesn't really stick but this one is pretty much done yeah. Let's see how they design the big reveal Reveal the design. Of course, I have to go ahead and frame it a little bit, the stitches, the jump stitches, but I think I did pretty cool. I was embroidering. There's some that I need to trim more. And this is it, my people. What do you think? This is nice. Nice, nice, nice. What do you think? Pretty good, huh? I think it's gorgeous. Came out real nice, especially with this purple color. I'm gonna take it here so you can have a better look. And this shirt is a large size, Gildan. And this design, it is nine and three eighths by five, which is takes yeah, okay. So that you know that you can do bigger designs with a repositional hook. Look, okay. So yeah, 
so you see how it looks. This is a nine and a three eighth length, and this is a five inch. And you see how you embroider? Right. Yeah, so I'm happy, very happy. Hi, back again. I hope you like this video. I tried to be as more specific as I, as I could. Again, thank you very much. And I think the t-shirt came out real nice um, right here. This is the t-shirt. It came real nice. I liked it a lot. It's a good size. And I show you that you can go ahead and use this repositional hook to embroider larger size. Again, um, if you have subscribed already, thank you. Thank you very much. If you have not subscribed, consider subscribing. Give me the thumb, give me the thumb up. And I'll see you in my next video, which I'm going to be talking about sublimation. I'm going to do a project on sublimation on a t-shirt, a special project. Okay. So bye-bye. Hasta luego. I'll see you soon.